Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on the series of ISTQB Foundation Examination. Finally, we come to chapter 4 and this chapter 4 is all about dynamic test techniques or we also call it as test design techniques. So, we'll be looking into the test design techniques in this chapter and requires a lot of understanding skills because um, all the techniques are supposed to be you know resolved using some kind of calculations and tabulation so this require one or the other way you know having kind of interaction with the scenarios and uh, evaluating them in form of calculations so before we get into the content and uh, you know start understanding the techniques let's look into the uh, contents we have for this chapter 2 to be covered so we'll be having around six tutorials or maybe more uh, because I would like to specify each technique separately here. So maybe you'll be having 10 plus tutorials on this chapter. Uh, starting with the 4.1, the test development process for this tutorial will be understanding the prerequisite and the development process where how the techniques can fit into the process and so on. Whereas 4.2 will tell you the categories of test design techniques to understand how the categories are being divided and what categories are we covering in the foundation level. So the following topics below that like 4.3, 4.4 and 4.5 are the three categories which we'll be covering in this syllabus where uh, 4.3 is specification based techniques which we also know it as black box techniques. So 4.4 is structure based technique which we also know it as white box techniques. Uh, coming to 4.5, we have experience-based technique where, uh, you know, we'll be looking into the error guessing and exploratory techniques. And 4.6, again, a small topic to understand how the techniques can be selected at a different point of time and how we can also combine techniques. So, I think, you know, everything is going to be quite simple and easy. That's my responsibility to make it so. But all you need is to follow the tutorial to understand that and feel free to share any kind of inputs to make it better so moving with the first one that is 4.1 the test development process and we are talking about the understanding of the development process at k3 so k3 finally we come to the first topic which is marked with k3 that means so uh, we are going to apply so it's not going to limited or it's not going to be limited up to understanding of the development process like chapter 2 here we'll be implementing certain things like, you know, implementing the techniques and getting the uh, answers from that. So it does require some application skills. So applying the technique is equally important. And that's where K3 comes. That is, your knowledge level must be at the apply. So here in this segment, when we talk to understand uh, the test development process, we are not trying to elaborate a development model. We are trying to understand how a development process is being basically implemented and how the uh, you know techniques best fit into the process. So these are the things which we need to take care of and understand the entire process. So the old story starts from the moment the development process is selected. So if you have selected a process where documentation is high or maybe, you know, very formal and are written in green lines, like, you know, detailed documentation. On the other side, there are certain development process where no documentations are used and we have techniques for each one of them. So at some places, uh, when you talk about the formal process, the formal techniques are used like black box and white box. And when we don't have formally documented uh, requirements and other things, we go for experience based techniques which do help you at that point of time so the level of formality basically depends on the context of testing like how the testing is being you know implemented whether it is going to be uh, you know done like exploratory uh, when you talk about agile and so on but in traditional approaches the testing will be documented and we have clear requirements with us and we do not have anyone to support us throughout the process of so, it does have some factors to be considered and not only limited to the context of testing, we do have different factors as you can see over the slide that we have development process as one of the constraint, time constraint, safety or regulatory requirements and the people involved. People involved in the sense that how strong your testing team is with the testing skills. It, it's, it does happen that sometimes the testing team is domain expert but does not have a formal training on the testing practices. So it becomes a challenge for them to implement the techniques. So there are all these factors which influence uh, the uh, level of formality like how we will be going bad with the 
using the techniques and so on. Further moving into the process and understanding that when the test cases are being prepared, so uh, basically test design is the phase where test cases and the test data are created. Test cases is another term to be remembered here that test cases are such set of instructions which are written to validate one or the other feature of an application and you must be quite familiar with test cases writing but I'll be showing you a template here which will make you understand that how test cases are basically written and it can help you but just for your kind information the syllabus does not involve any kind of test case writing or evaluation it's just a term which we are trying to use because techniques help you to minimize your test cases a test case consists of set of input values and execution precondition, expected results and execution preconditions defined to cover a test condition or test objectives. So finally, that just in this point, I'm trying to explain you that what are the different fields to be added when you create a test case sheet. So we basically include uh, objectives and uh, we include the preconditions. Uh, also, like you know, we talk about the post conditions and many other things like that. And also define an objective that what will you be achieving once this test case passes. So we do define including the test data and many other things. So there's another important aspect of test case which is called as expected result, which is derived directly from the requirement uh, as a part of writing the test case where you set up an expectation of by executing that test case that what do you expect to happen on the application or what do you expect to behave uh, expected behavior of the application when you conduct these steps so you know that's the expected result which will be mentioned as a part of test case sheet while you're preparing the test cases when you execute you also add another column to your test case sheet which is called as actual result where you will be mapping the actually happening status on the application in this same sheet and then you compare the actual result with the expected result and then mark your status with pass or fail if your expected result is equal to actual it is pass when expected is not equal to actual it is fail during test implementation so now we know about the fundamental test process so it must be able for you to you know it must be easy for you to uh, you know put back the things in the process and reimagine uh, during the test implementation implementation the test cases are elaborated like in pain case you written high level test conditions then you elaborate your test cases in the implementation phase implemented prioritized and organized in the test procedures so we basically try to prioritize and prepare the test suites and all those things in the part of test implementation phase now the new term which comes up here is test procedures where test procedure basically is a you know process i can say or i can just call it as a collection of actions which are basically defining how the execution of the test will happen so you know all these action which are put in a sequence which says that how the test will finally execute is what we call it as test procedure so let me quickly show you a template of test case and then a test procedure so here is the template of a test case sheet where you can see the you know it's a very generic one and you can have a variant available within your organization so it's not limited or fixed or recommended by ISTQB it is just me showing you this template which is quite common and generic you can add more columns to it you can remove columns to it you can play with it depending on your organization standards so we have for you know columns in the sequence like TCID which stands for the test case ID which is the unique identification number of the test cases whereas objective will have unique objective of each test case to be mentioned to acknowledge that what do you achieve after executing this test case when the test case passes prerequisite are those things which you need before execution we also call it as execution preconditions that is making sure the application is ready or you know you have the system environment ready and so on or maybe you know the application itself must be launching or not so if it is not launching obviously your prerequisite is not met and you cannot further go ahead with execution test data deals with any kind of input values if in case your test cases involve a field where you need to enter a value or something like drop down or maybe a radio button which has to select a value specific value or we call it as user input then you put those values here in test data column Whereas test steps are the steps which are required by a user to perform that specific task. For example, to log in into the application, the steps would be enter the username as, as specified and 
enter the password as specified and click on OK button. Now these three steps are basically called as your test steps which will be executed by a user or a test engineer while testing the application or executing this test case. Expected result, we just spoke about it, the expectation from the application when these steps are being executed on the application. What do you expect to happen? And this is what you call it as test case template. Team, this is the template which is used when you're writing the test cases. I'm not saying this is complete, but this is limited when it is uh, in test design phase. We do add more columns to it, like adding actual result, status of the test case, and uh, remarks on the test case. Three more columns generally when we come to execution. So when you're writing the test cases, we are limited to this and we strictly follow that. Here is an example of test procedures. So if you see, uh, I've just taken a generic example here to make you understand that what basically a test procedure is. So if you uh, basically see here, we have got uh, some kind of activities happening. Does the program P satisfies the specification SP? And then we create, this is the requirement. So there's a requirement mentioned here. So based on that, we have uh, generated certain test cases. We call it as test selection. Test execution, that is where you execute your test cases, and comparison with the expected result is called as test specification uh, satisfaction. Whereas finally, if it is pass or fail or undecided, is test in uh, interpretation. So finally, putting it all together, if you see the three part here, which is like you know the test procedure, is the test selection, test execution, and test satisfaction are the sequence of actions to be conducted as a part of test execution. So first is to generate the test cases or prepare the test cases, execute them and compare the results. So putting these three things together, we call it as a test procedure. So that is what is generally called as a test procedure and you may involve many other things like test case generation. Before that you can include test data preparation or acquiring test data from the client or maybe a different team and during the test case generation you are preparing for test suite and all. You can include that as a part of test procedure. So this is just a generic example with three stages to make you understand that what test procedures are. It's just a collection of different uh, sequence of actions which are required for executing the test. Finally, you can include some more if you want and you can elaborate it further. So beyond that, obviously we'll be looking into the next topic which is going to talk about the techniques, categories and understand what are the different techniques we are going to cover as a part of this ISTQB foundation syllabus. So stay tuned for upcoming videos and uh, more knowledge about foundation level and also to get tips and tricks about the uh, examination which would help you to save a lot of time also to crack the paper in one shot. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos and in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and uh, till then, enjoy learning, happy learning, take care.